the Lord said Sunday that thy penetrating word gives light. The light of the word goes into your heart. And that's what we need. Light drives out darkness. Everybody say light drives out darkness. When you go into a dark room, you turn on the light and you can see everything in the room so you don't bump into anything. You don't want to be walking in darkness. Uh, if you try to walk in darkness, you might bump into something and abuse yourself and hurt yourself. So we want to make sure that we're walking in the light. And he says, thy word is a light unto my feet. Well, I think uh, it was Mike that had a prophecy Sunday in Pastor Capit, but it was talking about his word is a light until our feet. See, you got, what was that? Somebody find it for me in Psalms about that light path scripture. So I make sure I quote it right. But here we are, it's seven o'clock. We're here at Center of Attraction, the place where Jesus is center of attraction. Jesus must be your focal point. In him we live and move and have our being. In him we live. In him we move. You'll do nothing without his permission. And we have our being. We exist because of him. Hallelujah. So therefore, we must be obedient to him and learn his ways. Uh, when you read the epistles in the Bible, the epistles teach you Christian living. I love it. You read the Gospels of Jesus Christ. You learn all about Jesus, the miracles he did, the parables he taught. I mean, um, the, you got to read the Gospels so you get to know Jesus, right? You got to read the Gospels. But then when you get to Acts, the history of the church, the birth of the church, the receiving of the Holy Ghost, huh? You got to receive the Holy Ghost. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they will cast out devils. In my name they will speak with new tongues, huh? They'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And they can tread on scorpions and serpents and all the power of the enemy. The birth of the church. And then after the birth of the church, we go to Romans. And it tells you so much about us, how we were shaping in sin. There was none righteous, no, not one. See, all shaping in iniquity. But then we go on to the epistles. We start learning how to live the Christian life through Peter like the Apostle Peter, the Apostle Paul, who different people, uh, the books were written to, to show us how to have a victorious Christian life. So let's keep on reading those epistles. Right now we're reading Ephesians, and this is a detailed, deep epistle. There is much truth in this book. And you know, Jesus said the truth will set you free. And he said, thy word is truth. He will sanctify us through the truth. See, we're not getting facts, we're getting truth. The truth is God. So you got to get to know him and know him beyond a shadow of doubt. You have to believe that he is. You got to believe that he is and that he is a what? A rewarder of those who diligently seek him, not casually. Oh, we got to get back to the old landmarks. We got to get back to the foundations. If the foundations be destroyed, what shall the righteous do, huh? Supposed to be saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. I am saved. I am sanctified, being sanctified, huh? And filled with the Holy Ghost, and that with a mighty burning fire. And you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes upon you. We got to have this power. So we got to get in the Word so we know Him. Somebody say, I got to know Him. Now we're in Ephesians chapter 4, verse number... I guess we're in verse 25, but I want you to look at verse 20 all the way to 24. Let me read that to you. But ye have not so learned Christ. Somebody say, learn Christ. Say, we have to learn Christ. Uh-huh. It's so be that you have heard him, so you got to hear him. You got to hear Christ's teaching. You got to know his doctrine and have been taught by him as the truth is in who? Jesus. Is the truth in anybody else? It's in Jesus. So you got to get back to the word and find out what Jesus said, the doctrines of Jesus, the doctrine of the apostle and the prophet, Jesus being the chief cornerstone. And then it says here that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. That's that lifestyle. Uh, that's that lifestyle. Amen? Oh, don't take off my coat, please. No. Um, it says here, that you put off the old man, which after God is created in righteousness. So first of all, I, I missed my verse, that you put off concerning the former conversation. That means lifestyle, the way you used to live. Stop doing what you used to do. 
Stop going where you used to go. Start running with the people you used to run with. You got a whole new life now. See, it says that you put off concerning the former conversation. The old man, get rid of that old man, get rid of that old woman, which is corrupt. Somebody say corrupt. corrupt. According to deceitful lust. Deceitful lust. The lust will deceive you. It will seduce you. It will have you do the wrong thing. Lust is a desire out of control, something that God does not want you to do. So then it says, and be renewed. Somebody say renewed. renewed. Say here's the key. Put it, put, put it in the lock. Turn, turn the key. huh? Here is the key. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. What do we have to do? Be renewed in the attitude of your mind by renouncing its vanity, its darkness and blindness and learning the ways of Christ. You got to reject it and you got to be renewed in the spirit. You hear me say the word spirit of your mind? You get a new spirit in your mind. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power. See that new spirit? Spirit of power, the spirit of love, and a sound mind. Somebody say a sound mind. Say, I'm coming back to that place in God. I'm being restored in the spirit of my mind. Psalms 23, he restores my soul. So you get into the word, and the word quickens you, and the word restores you. The word cleans up your mind. Do you hear me? The word cleans up your mind. Because what happened, we were renewed in the flesh. We've been watching the wrong thing, listening to the wrong conversation. See, come through the eye gate, come through the ear gate. Touching, touching things with your hand you ain't got no business touching. Saying things you ain't got no business saying. Listening to stuff you ain't got no business listening to. What well, it say, um, Psalms 101, verse 3, look that up for me, somebody. While you're looking it up, let me go back to this. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Now, here's my part. God has done his part. Jesus died on the cross, shed his blood for our sins. All our sins are washed away. We are a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away, and all things become new. But you still have to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That you got to present your body. A living sacrifice. See, you got to present your body. Somebody get that Romans 12, 1 and 2 for me. So two scriptures y'all looking up for me. You're helping me out here. That you put on. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on. This is the spirit and nature in God in the renewed mind. This is what my dates is saying. This is the spirit and nature of God in the renewed mind. And it says here, the Greek word for renewed is uh, aneo, uh, meaning the whole course of life now flows in a different direction. You're being renewed in the spirit of your mind. You got converted. You're going in a different direction. You're not what you used to be. See? Things you used to say, you don't say nowhere. Places you used to go, you don't go nowhere. People you used to hang out with, you don't hang out with no more because, more because <coughs> you, you knew they were distracted. Th their companionship was destructive. What did the Bible say? Evil communication corrupts. Good manner. Oh, so we don't need to be around certain people. You get with them, you get weak, and you do what they do. They corrupt you. They lead your life to destruction. And you don't need that. You're trying to go in a different direction. So you make up your mind, I'm going to be intentional. I'm going to serve God. I'm going to church. I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to pray. They can call me holy boy and holy girl all they want to. I make up my mind to be holy because God said what? Be ye holy for I am holy. Without holiness, no man will see God. There's a highway called what? Holiness. None but the pure in heart. We'll see the Lord. So you got to make up your mind. I'm going to be holy. Say, I'm going to be holy. Uh, uh, right now, it seems like there's a stream of uncleanliness and unholiness in the world. They want to be as graphic and negative as they can be and exposing our children to all unrighteousness. Stuff I didn't know when I was a kid. They, they telling little kids now what I didn't know as an adult. Come on now. 
Do you know that's abuse? Did you know that's abuse? When you give a child adult information, that is abuse? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, we know. So it says here that you put on the new man. Somebody say, put him on. Put on the new man. Take off that old person. Take off the old person. <coughs> and put on the new person. See, I'm saved now. I want to be saved. Which after God is created. Now, after God is created in what? What did it say? Look at verse number 24. They put on the new man, which after God is created in what? Righteousness. Oh, you reading. I'm proud of you. See, we're created in righteousness. Some might say righteousness. Righteousness. Means doing the right thing. Means doing the right thing. Come on, say it. Means doing the right thing. And making right choices. So we have to do, what did it say? We created in righteousness. Matthew 6 and 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and what? So we got to seek righteousness. We got to seek doing the right thing. We have to find out what God wants us to do. The right thing, not the wrong thing. See, righteousness. Righteousness, rightness. Not wrongness, righteousness. Then it says, created uh, in righteousness. And what? Then after you seek righteousness, what comes? True holiness. So if you seek righteousness, you're going to yield the fruit of holiness because God's going to show you the right thing to do and you're going to be pure without spot or wrinkle. Excuse me. Your heart is going to be holy. Woo -wee. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that amazing? I'm seeking God. I'm seeking God in his righteousness. And I'm going to yield the fruit of what? Holiness. Can't be God. Look at there. Now, now this is our part. God on done his part. Now, look at our part. Wherefore, what are we to do in verse number 25? Somebody help me. Stop lying. What you talking about? Some folks just lie. Look at me. They lie like a rug. They rug is laid on the floor. Look how it's laying there. It just lie like a rug. This automatically lie. All they do is lie, lie, lie. Satan is the father of lies. Did y'all know that? Satan is the father Ooh. of lies. Those two scriptures I want to look up. Did y'all find them? Read that one. Psalms 101 and 3 says, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. So I don't want to set no wicked thing before my eyes. Y'all look at me. Stop watching these shows with all this fornication, adultery, cussing. They said everything, taking God's name in vain. They make mockery of the church and preachers. They got nothing to say about God's people. Don't set no wicked things before your eyes. Did you not know that wicked stuff goes into your spirit? It says over there in um, Matthew 6, it talks about the eye is full of darkness. You can look that up for me. The eye is full of darkness. But if the eye is full of light, how great is the light within? But it's full of darkness. How great is that darkness within you? You can't let darkness go through your eyes. I get and say it ain't going to affect you. Watch these horror movies and see about having nightmares. Huh? Having these visitations. Somebody came over to get me and Paso. Uh, their bed was levitating by itself, raising up in the air because they've been watching uh, these movies with ghosts and stuff. Poltergeists is what they're called, a manifestation. And we went over there and prayed. I prayed with her. I said, what you been doing? So we got to make sure that we got our eye gate, our ear gate, our mouth gate, and don't watch these programs. So he says, wherefore, put away lying. Speak every man truth with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. What does that mean? Somebody is speaking lying. They lying on purpose. Speak every man truth to his neighbor. We have to be very careful 
about what we are saying. Speak every man true. Don't intentionally tell somebody a lie. I know this one girl, she intentionally told a lie to her mother, and she said that she was molested, and her mother wouldn't kill the person. And her mother ended up in prison. And it was all because her daughter told a lie. It wasn't funny to tell that lie. Look at the consequences of that lie. So we have to be careful what we're saying, huh? Because some people are not going to react the way you want them to react. If somebody steals some money from you and you said they strong-armed you and did this and that, some people will go after them, <coughs> right? So we got to be careful. It says, stop lying. Speak every man's truth with his neighbor. And when you do a study on it, put away lying and tell the truth. If you don't want to do it, just tell the person, you know, I don't think I'm going to do it. I'm not going to show up. Don't lie to the person. I'll be there. And he said, <laughs> you ain't going to be there. You're not going to show up. You're not going to be dependable. Just tell the truth. I don't want to do it. I'm sorry. I won't be available. So it says here, put away lying. Speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Only person you heard is who? Yeah, and your neighbor. Think about it. If that person believes what you said. Hmm? And then what did it say, verse 26? Be ye angry and sin not. Don't be angry. Put away anger. I read, I did a Bible study on that. Put away all anger. <coughs> and then it says, you know, we know we're not supposed to go to bed angry, right? Put away, put away uh, all anger. Sin not, you know, anger is not a sin. It's what you do with it. Because God can get angry, but God doesn't sin. See? But we, we our anger does not work the righteousness of God. We got to be careful because people are doing stuff out of anger and they end up doing something horrible. Right? Uh, you can see that on these movies. You can see the, the works of the flesh of anger. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. That means don't go to bed angry. You know what happens when you go to bed angry? You give a foothold to the devil. He gets his foot in the door and he can come back in. Because once you get angry about this, you get angry about that. And then you wake up in the morning, you're angry, you might want to kick the cat or dog. You know what I'm saying? You're angry. And it, it'll mess up your whole day because you're angry. You, you, you got to forgive people before you go to bed. You got to let go of that anger. If you don't want to talk to them, then you're going to have to talk to them to get rid of it and have a, a decent conversation, uh, not a volatile one, not that's so heated that it will cause blows, but you got to communicate. All right? Be you angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. The wrath of man. See, that wrath of man doesn't work God's righteousness. Then it says, neither give place to the devil. The picture is a salesperson coming to your house and asking you to buy, let's say, a vacuum cleaner. If they know if they can get in, put their foot, what they do is put their foot in the door so if they can get in there and sell you that product. Don't give place to the devil. Don't let him come into your house. I'm talking about you, the temple of the Holy Ghost. Don't get full of anger. Don't be sitting there thinking about all these evil things you're going to do to this person because they did this to you. Don't give place to the devil. Don't open the door for the devil. Keep the door closed. There was a song my sister Demona sang at Sacta High, and it was, they, it was like a Jamaican sound. You know, don't give place to that devil. Keep the door closed. We got to make sure that we keep the door closed. Let him that stole. Now, when I was reading the commentary, it said, let him that stole steal no more. In this culture, people were used to stealing. They was used to doing five-finger shopping, picking up stuff that didn't belong to them. If you find some money, does that money belong to you? Huh? You in Kmart, find somebody's wallet. I know people have turned it in. They went back. They was crying. Somebody had turned their, 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 their wallet in with all their whole check in there, and they were just crying. The person was honest. The person said, this ain't my money. This belongs to somebody. And he left it at the counter. And she was able to get her money back. Don't steal. Don't do no five-finger shopping. We don't believe in Indian giving. We don't believe find your keepers, Luke Joe Weepers. 
People don't like that. How I feel when you lose money. Do you like people to keep your money? So it says right here, let him steal, steal, steal no more. So they was used to stealing, but rather let him get a job. Let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that need him. So why are you working? Come on, why are you working? Just for yourself? Just for yourself? Or so you have enough to help yourself and to help others, it said. Didn't it say that? That you may have enough after working with your hands may have to have to uh, give to him that needed. So you're not being stingy. You're being considerate, being thoughtful, God-like. And then verse 29, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. What you talking about? Corrupt communication. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. What are you talking about? Corrupt communication. Gossip? Mary Ann, Minister Mary Ann said gossip. So okay, one, gossip. You think lying's another one? Corrupt communication? Two? Mm, talking about corrupt. Oh, profanity? You cussing? Using God's name in vain, saying horrible stuff? That's corrupt communication. What about lying on somebody? Saying you saw them do it and you didn't see them do it. All right? Talk what you know and testify what you see. You didn't see it. Somebody, somebody told you. You said you got a reliable source. Well, who is your reliable source? I can't tell you that. Oh? So it looked like to me you don't have no reliable source. If you can't order to who the source is, something's wrong. See, let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth but that which is good to the use of edifying. So what kind of communication should you have? Good. It's going to do what? What's the word edify mean? Build up. It's going to edify somebody and build them up. You're going to say something good, they're going to feel good about themselves instead of tearing them down and making fun. You know, a lot of people seem to have problems. They like to make fun of people. Hmm? Look at his big head. <laughs> he got a big head, a big nose. <laughs> you know, they just tease people and, and make folks feel bad. And you know that's called what? Bullying, right? And some people, they got tired of the bullying. They end up doing some bad things because of the bullying. We're not supposed to let corrupt communication come out of our mouth. Our mouth. We're supposed to edify people, say something good about them. Say something positive, right? Um, I, I did this class for the Holton Jones summer program, and I would go over there once a week and teach. And there was this article in the paper called Lukeism. And this girl's nose was awful big. And it didn't look good on her face at all. So I was reading it. And she was saying that she didn't ask to be born with that nose, and people didn't have a right to be tormenting her like they were doing and teasing her. And it was called lookism. And I talked to the kids about it and they, and they understood and said, no, we shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't make fun of a person. I remember at school when my kids was little, this one little boy's uh, mom, she didn't look pretty, she looked pretty bad. But they didn't know that she went in the house and saved her little boy out the fire. And she would, her whole face was burned, her arms and everything. She looked so grotesque, but she saved her little boy and he was the handsomest thing you ever want to see. But the kids didn't know what they was teasing and laughing about was something that wasn't to be laughed about. She was a, he a, 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 a hero, a shero. She saved her son from the fire. So we don't know some people have not asked to look like that. They came out the war, huh? They came out the war, they were blown up by a grenade, and they don't look pretty, but they are a hero. So be careful about what we're saying. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying. That's why we celebrate people on 
Memorial Day and, and um, Veterans Day. We celebrate our veterans. We have veterans in this church. We celebrate them. Leon, you're a veteran, right? And Les is a veteran and Shalanda's a veteran. And I don't know all, we, we have veterans in this church and, and we celebrate them because they served in our army. You just don't know. You want your loved one to come back whole, but you don't have no proof they're gonna come back whole, but they gave their lives for their country and we should love on them. And if you can give an offering, is it wounded warriors? If you can give an offering to wounded warriors, just one a month or, or, or once a year, give an offering to help those soldiers out, male and female, who gave their life for our country. So we, may, we want to minister grace, it said, uh, to the hearer. Let me hear 29 um, in a different version, amplified and maybe another version, verse 29. 29, mm -hmm. do not let unwholesome, foul, profane, worthless, vulgar words ever come out of your mouth, but, such, but only such speak as it is good for building up others according to the need and the occasion so that it will be a blessing to those who hear you speak. So you want to bless people? I think God said to Abraham, he's going to make him a blessing. We want to, God, make me a blessing. Can you say that, God, make me a blessing? Help me to bless people, to encourage them. And it says in, in, in King James that it may minister grace unto the hearer. Give them that grace, that blessing that they need. Isn't this a good chapter? And it's really helping you live the Christian life. See, uh, my Bible says 20 commands for Christians. So I guess you got to go through and count them and see how many commandments. I was thinking about that the other day, that we need to study the commands. Let's see how many commands we can find in the New Testament. And then let's study how many promises we have. Let's see if we're keeping the commands of the Lord Jesus Christ, the, the commands that the apostles gave us. Hmm? Let's find out if we're keeping his commandments or have we become lax and allowing things in our life because the world is doing it, now the church is doing it. You know it says that judgment is gonna start at the house of God first. And so we gotta make sure we are the shining examples. What did, was that the Apostle Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ? Look at my example. Huh? You follow the perfect man. Don't follow crooked people. And you know they're crooked, right? And I'm, I'm sick of these sitcoms that show the church people are all corrupt. Come on now. There's somebody living saved out here. There's somebody that really loves Jesus and live clean. They live clean. Everybody's not corrupt. Sure, you got one bad apple in a bunch. What you do, get rid of the bad apple and keep on going. Right? Hmm. And then it says here, now watch this, verse 30 is an important verse. What did it say? Somebody read their version. Uh, NIV, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Hmm. Grieve. You can make the Holy Spirit upset about the way you're living, what you're saying, what you're doing. You can grieve him, make him sad. Now, you know he's in you, right? He's the Holy Spirit. It's in you. The world cannot receive him, but we know him because he lives and abides in us. You've got to go back and read St. John chapter 14, 15, 16, and it talks about he's the Holy Spirit and the believer. And his job is to lead us into all truth, to show us things to come, to convict us of all unrighteousness, to teach us, huh? That's the Holy Spirit. To quicken us according to the word, the Holy Spirit. We're in his dispensation now. He, he's the enforcer. Y'all understand that? Jesus said, I got to go away so the Father and I can send the Holy Ghost who is everywhere, 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 everywhere. He don't care where you are. The Holy Spirit is there. And he lives in the believer. If, if you have asked Jesus to come into your heart, the Holy Ghost gives you 
a God conviction now. Before you were saved, you didn't have no conviction. You didn't care about what you did or said. But now you're ashamed when you do stuff. Holy Ghost conviction. He's telling you you need to repent and say you're sorry. Don't do that no more. Don't go there. Uh, respect your mama. Respect your daddy. You shouldn't say that. Honor your mother and father. The Holy Spirit's a job is to lead you into all truth, and he's supposed to get you ready at that day. At that day. He's the Holy Spirit. It's supposed to get you ready. So, so when the rapture comes, the great catching away, and we are at the, uh, uh, the, the Bema seat of Christ, and we get our rewards, we, we won't miss getting our rewards because we listen to he, the Holy Spirit, and we cut off all that stuff. We took off the old man and put on the new. And when we stand before God, we're not going to be shamed. Huh? We're going to have something in our crown. We're going to have our white robe of righteousness on because our works have gone through the fire, and we didn't suffer loss. you got to study that out. See, there's, there's, there's two judgments. There's the judgment seat for Christians, and that's based not on sin. That's based on works because the cross took care of our sin. That's why you get saved because the cross took care of your sin. If you haven't received Jesus as your Savior and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, believe in your heart that he's the Savior, you can't be saved. You must believe in your heart that Jesus is the Son of God, that he's able to save you from your sin. Somebody say, accept, believe, confess. Oh, I can't hear you. Say, accept, believe, believe. believe. Confess. confess. Accept Jesus as the Son of God. Believe in your heart that he's able to save you. And see, if you call upon the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. Not no if, and, or but, but you shall be saved. All you got to say, thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. I believe, I believe. I believe God raised you from the dead on the third day. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe. I believe you died for my sin. And because you got up, Jesus, I can get up. Hallelujah. Somebody say resurrection life. We're going to be walking in resurrection life. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Brand new. Somebody say brand new, brand new. My hands look new. My feet do too. I'm brand new. Hmm. Hallelujah. What did it say? Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Don't grieve him. Don't do stuff you know is wrong. <sighs> cut it off, cut it off, cut it off. Did you know that word mortify in the New Testament means to cut it off? You cut it off through the spirit of the word. That's how you cut stuff off through the word. Somebody say cut it off through the word. You can't cut it off in your strength and your ability. I'm going to be strong. No, uh the, the Holy Spirit will help you cut it off through the word. That two-edged sword will help you cut it off. See? Mortify the deeds of the flesh. Whereby you are sealed. See, the Holy Spirit is in you. You are sealed. Uh, I'm trying to think of a picture. Like when you use a signet ring, they used to seal stuff. But you are sealed until the day of redemption. The Holy Spirit is a, they say it's an earnest deposit in your heart. The Holy Spirit has been given to let you know that God is coming back for you. It's a deposit. God is coming back for you. So every time you speak in tongues, it reminds you that God is coming back for me. I got a seal in me. He called, he's called the Holy Ghost, and, and he's going to quicken me. I'm going to go up in the rapture. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's that seal. Huh? What did it say? It said earnest deposit in one, in one uh, translation. He's that deposit. Hallelujah. Now watch this. This is our part. Somebody say my part. Okay. Let all bitterness. Hmm. What does that word bitterness mean? Let's see. Malice, ven venom. Huh. So this said, let it all of it. Get rid of it. It's malice and venom in, in your heart. You bitter. You angry. You mad at that person. You don't like them at all. You bitter. They did something to you, and you said, I ain't going to never forget. If, I, if, I, if I'm going get to back, get back with them. I, I got a little black book. I'm going to write down what he did to me. I got it dated and everything. I determined to have revenge. See, I got a get back spirit. I'm going to get him. See, I'm going to get him. And this is what we're dealing with. You see that all on all these shows. They try to make it look like it was good. No, it was not good. That revenge was not good. Did God say, vengeance is mine, thou shall repay? Huh? Didn't he say, overcome evil with good? Then he said, if you don't stand forgiven, you won't be forgiven. 
So what it look like to me, if you, if you got bitterness, you're not going nowhere. You can't even go to heaven with that in you. And then the next one was wrath. And let's see what wrath means. Any vehement passion, anger, wrath, hatred. Galatians 5.20. Let our wrath be put away from you. Get, get rid of wrath. That, I think that'll work with, with the bitterness. Don't you think so? That anger, that venom, the indignation, and wrath. And then it says vengeance is one of the words, too. Ooh, look at those scriptures. They got so many. Wow, so many scriptures to look up. Just if you got a day, you look up all those scriptures about this, this, this wrath. And anger. Anger resteth in the bosom of fools, it says. It says, put away all anger. I did a Bible study. It cease from anger, right? Stop being angry. It's not going to help you any. The wrath, of man, the wrath of man does not work the righteousness of God. Your anger will not bring forth righteousness. You may kill somebody. You may murder somebody because of your anger and you're out of control. Because you know you start with anger, but you keep going up. You know, there was fury, there was wrath. The person totally lost their mind. They didn't even know what they were doing. And stop saying that. Stop saying you're going to kill somebody. This young man was a Christian, filled with the Holy Ghost. He was mad with his wife, and he kept on saying he was going to kill her. And one day he did. When I was at the jail ministry, and he told me his story. And I felt sorry for him. He was the church musician. I felt sorry for him that he kept confessing out of his mouth that evil. And eventually he did it. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Stop saying these things. Right? Then it says, let our bitterness, wrath, and anger, and clamor. Let's see what clamor means. Uproar. Hmm. They got scriptures on it. They have um, Acts 23 and 9. Nine. They keep up an uproar. You saw that following the Apostle Paul when he went places. They was always trying to cause riots and all kind of things. They were trying to snatch them and kill them, all kind of things. An uproar. We need to put that away from us. Wanting to cause a fight. Do you see that? Anger and clamor. And then it says evil speaking. Blasphemia, to say anything evil and wicked. Evil speaking. Put that away. Don't say it. Don't go there. Don't, don't say it. Don't repeat that. Put away evil speaking. And, be, and put away from you with all malice. Get rid of malice. It says naughtiness, maliciousness, and wickedness. Get rid of all malice. What you can do is take your time and do a Bible study, get you a notebook, at least write down three scriptures for each of these words and find out what they mean in context in different areas of your Bible. Get rid of all malice. Peter says, put away all malice. Put away evil speaking. That's in Peter. He said, you go out there, but you got to put away this stuff. You got to stop it. You can't keep on doing this. And then it says, be ye kind one to another. Tender-hearted, forgiving one another. Even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Here we are admonished to be kind to one another. Stop being a meanie. Stop being mean. Huh? Be ye kind one to another. Tender-hearted. Your heart is tender. You're kind. You're generous. You're going to give them a second chance. You forgive them. You don't go around and tell everybody what they did. You don't want to turn all these people against them. And everybody rolling their eyes at them because of what you said. Forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, listen, you've been forgiven. You don't forgot? You don't forgot all those sins that God forgave you of? You've been forgiven. How can you hold something against somebody else? Y'all know that story in Matthew 18 about that king forgave that man of that big debt? 
gave, forgave him of a big debt. It might have been a million dollars, I think. Next thing you know, he finds a person who owes him a little bit of money. He grabs him and throws him in, in prison. And the king found out about it because his servants told on him. So he came to the king. The king said, you know, I forgave you, and you wouldn't forgive this person. And they took him and delivered him to the tormentors, the one that had the big debt because he wouldn't forgive somebody of a little debt. You forgot you've been saved, that we're all sinners falling short of the glory of God. Who are you to hold something against somebody? We got a, you got a big debt. And he had a little teeny weeny debt. You got so nerve. Forgive people. Let it go. Forgive people. Put it under the blood. Sometimes, you know, we wrote out, wrote out what should we do in order to show forgiveness. I think it was well, to appease, a soft answer turns away wrath, but a gift appeases anger. A gift. So, so you could buy up somebody a gift. Send them a card. Huh? Maybe somebody don't like it and you don't know what you did to make that person not like you. Send them a flower. Send them a plant. And, and then you, you'll, sit, you'll be surprised. They'll change their whole attitude towards you. Right? Be there for the person. Say, I've been praying for you. I just want you to know I'm concerned. And if you, here, here, this card. It's not much money. But this is what I have. I just want to bless you to get what you need. Right? Take some food over somebody's house. You heard about them struggling. What am I say? A soft answer turns away wrath and a gift pacifies anger. You want somebody to not stop being angry with you? Give them something. Break that spirit. So it said, be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. We got to remember that we are forgiven and that everybody is a candidate for forgiveness, no matter how grievous the crime they have committed. We have to say, Lord, forgive them. Father, forgive them because they don't know what they were doing. Um, they, they were controlled by uh, another spirit, not your spirit. Well, we're in chapter 5, and we still have about 15, 20 minutes. Chapter 5 of Ephesians. Somebody want to read that first verse? Ephesians 5 and 1. Therefore, become imitators of God, copy him, and follow his example, as well-beloved children imitate their father. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. How, what are we supposed to be doing? Somebody tell me. I know the cat ain't got your tongue now. You know how to talk. What should we be doing if we're imitating God? Living right. Living right. Somebody else? Walking in love. Huh? Being truthful. Being truthful. Be therefore followers of God as dear children. So you're being harmless. You're not full of malice. You're not full of anger, the things you talked about in the chapter above. You're following God as dear children. You're not, you're not a troublemaker. You're not one that sowed up discord among the brethren. But you're following God as dear children. And you're trying your best to lead other people to Christ and, and be a blessing to people. Yes. Now look at verse 2. Somebody read verse 2. The NIV, and walk in the way of love just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragment offering and sacrifice to God. As a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God for what? Did it say a sweet smelling savior for yours? NIV says walk in love as Christ has, this is King James, and walk in love as Christ had also loved us, right? And have given himself for what? An offering? A sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling Savior. So, what does that sweet smelling Savior mean? Does anybody have anything? Well, from my dates, it says an odor of a sweet smell to God. 
Jesus was not offering a stinky sacrifice. His life wasn't stinky. He committed no sin, no guile was in him. He was spotless, he was holy, he was the son of God. And so here we see Jesus offering a sacrifice to God and it was sweet smelling sacrifice. Him being on the cross, what God saw was his willingness and his obedience to God the Father. You see that? Let me see, did it say anything else here? Nope, it didn't say anything else. But we have to make sure that we're following Jesus' example that our life is a sweet-smelling sacrifice, not one of offense. It's a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling Savior. What, what, what God is smelling is that humility, the obedience of how Jesus became broken before God, was willing to do whatever God the Father said. Lord, uh, you know, I don't want this cup, but nevertheless, I'll drink this cup. He didn't let the cup pass the cup of suffering, how he suffered for us, and laid down his life. Did it say that too? At walk in love as Christ had loved us, have given himself for us an offering. So what did he do? For us. He gave himself for us a sweet-smelling offering. He laid down his life. Right. He didn't have to do it, did he? But he did. Wow. When they came to get in the, in the garden, he said, it, it, here I am, it's me. I'm the one you were looking for. He didn't run. He didn't deny the cross. He bore the cross. You know, um, Apostle did a series on denying yourself. You know, taking up your cross and following him. We see Jesus taking up his cross, willing to go all the way to Golgotha and die for us. And say on the cross, first thing, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He, he didn't speak any revenge. He was a sweet-smelling sacrifice, a lamb before the shears. He was a lamb, willing to die for us. Okay, number three. But what did it say? Verse three. But fornication... And all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be uh, once named among you as become a saint. Another version, please. Somebody got that in verse 3 in another version? Among you there should not even be a mention of sexual immortal, uh, immorality or any kind of impurity or greed. These are utterly inappropriate for God's holy people. Wow. So it says, six common sins condemned. Fornication. Fornication. Fornication is premarital sex. Fornication, and you're not married to the person, but also it's adultery or any sexual sin or perversion. But fornication and all uncleanness. This makes you unclean. This defiles you. This could include pornography, don't you think so? Mm -hmm. It could include pornography. And then it said covetousness. You want what belongs to somebody else? It does not belong to you? What did the Ten Commandments say? Don't cover anybody's wife, their, 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 their uh, worker, their, their labor that works for them. Don't cover it. nobody's nothing. Don't desire what, what belongs to somebody else. Thou shalt not cover it. it. It's a sin of lust. What you want something that belongs to somebody else, right? So, so you break, th break in their house and steal. You, you don't want to work a job? Go get, hey, you could be a janitor. You can mop floors, at least you got clean money. It's not illegal money. So covetousness, you got to look that up. But fornication and all, it said all, A-L-L, -L, uncleanness. Don't do with anything unclean. I will set no wicked things before my eyes. Don't let anything unclean come to your eyes. You say, oh, that's harmless. Prophetess. No, it's not. It is not harmless. 
You don't want that stuff to get into your spirit. You don't want that to get a hold of you. Let it not be once named among you as we come of saints. It said not one time should it be named among you. In this society nowadays, they think it's cool. They think it's all right for this stuff to be named among them. Huh? Partners with benefits. Huh? Who, who, who hooked up to, you know, the baby's mama? That's the baby's mama. That's the baby daddy. They don't care about nothing. It says, as become a saint, we're not to be doing these things. I don't know how it is that you can be on an island with men and say you're a virgin and you're a Christian. And, and, and you're compromising your, your morality and your Christian beliefs. I said, what is this? It's not right. We don't, we, do we know right from wrong? Then the next one says, neither filthiness. Filthiness, neither filthiness. And the Greek word was A-I-S-C-H-R-O-T-E-S. -E Looks like it's Aerocrates or something like that, excuse me. Ugliness, baseness, vileness, shame, and infamy. Filthiness. It says, don't let any filthiness be named among you, nor foolish talking. Some of these comedians, what they're saying is horrific. It's not funny. It is gross. It is nasty. It's ugly. And people that are sitting up there laughing. Don't let your children watch that. Then it says, baseness, vileness, shame. Then foolish talking, speaking foolishly, idle, stupid talk. You know you shouldn't have said that, and you said it. Don't let foolish talk come out your mouth. Don't say that. It's not funny. There's some good Christian comedians out there. They got some pretty good clean um, um, CDs, and, and you can laugh and everything with them. You don't have to get gross. huh? You don't have to be vile and perverse. And when I do spiritual warfare, you bind the spirit of whoredom. They went a whoring after other gods. You bind the spirit of a whoredom and you loose the spirit of God in Jesus' name. The fear of God in Jesus' name. The fear of God and you lose holiness and agape love because that's not real love. What you're seeing is somebody abusing somebody, somebody using somebody. But this is says, he says, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, that, that, that j foolish joking, which are not convenient, but rather giving a thing. So he was saying, this is not convenient. This is not acceptable for us to do. But we should be giving up thanks, offer thanksgiving. Th think of something to be thankful about. Just rejoice how the Lord kept you, how the Lord protected you, how, how you made it this year, uh, how you had an increase in income, how the, the Lord finally blessed you with the house. You got a car. Your children are fine. Be thankful that your, your grandchildren are healthy. Thank you, Lord. I just got so much to thank you for, Lord. Thank you for waking me up this morning. Give me the strength, God, to get out of bed. Some people ain't got that strength. Thank you, Lord. We're blessed. You're blessed to be in the land of the living. Then it says, For this ye know that no whoremonger, there's that word again, no whoremonger, Mm. It says five classes not to inherit God's kingdom. Mm. No whoremonger, no unclean person, there it go. You know, if you touch something that was dead, you became defiled. It's like a leper, if they touch somebody, that person became defiled because they were contagious. Nor covetous men dealing with this idolatry, uh, with this idolatry. Who is an idolater? See, he's a he. That's an idol in his life. He's just lusting after what belongs to somebody else. He's an idolater. 
did I say it right? Idolater. So you got to make sure that you keep your heart pure, that you don't want what belongs to another person. Have any, it said they don't have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ as God. Ooh. Oh. That don't sound good. You ain't got no inheritance? That mean you're not going to heaven? That's kind of sad. Because you didn't guard your borders? You weren't intentional how you were serving God? You got loosey-goosey and let your, let your borders down and left your gates open? And the enemy came on in? And, and he brought destruction to your life? Hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God? Let no man deceive you with vain words. What kind of bad words are these? Empty words. Deceptive words. Let no man deceive you. You being deceived? Don't you know right from wrong? How can that person deceive you? It's like he put a leash around your neck and, and, and he taking you to the wrong to the wrong place. Let the man deceive you with a vain with vain words. Because of these things, come as what? Let's see what's happening. Come as the wrath of oh, there's a wrath of God. Jesus came to save us from the wrath of God. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. He came to save us from the wrath. There is a future wrath coming from God. He's going to judge our disobedience. He's a God of justice and equity. He don't discriminate. Where he finds sin, he's going to judge it. The wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Somebody say disobedience. disobedience. Said I got to obey. I have to obey. I have to obey God. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And then it says, be not, be not ye therefore partakers with them. Okay, stop. D don't connect yourself to them. Don't hang out with them. Don't go out until we're going to steal with them. Like it says in Proverbs chapter 1. They said, come on with us and we're going to keep this person. We're going to rob and steal and kill the people that we, 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 we robbing. And we're going to be all partakers of that one purse. He said, my son, consent now to them. Say no to them. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. I know of a case where somebody was in the store with them at Walmart and they were stealing and they had the other person hold the bag and when they got caught, the other person was holding the bag. They wasn't stealing, but they was with them. Don't go to Walmart with no money. You know you ain't got no money. Then why are you in there shopping with no money? You were sometimes darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. You used to walk like that. You used to be a, a five-finger shopper or a thief. You used to like to steal, but now God has taught you better, and you don't do that anymore. You pay back all your debts. You pay back everybody you owe. You don't owe no man nothing but to love them. See, you're paying all your bill collectors. Hmm? You, you're even paying your rent -a sitter bill. <laughs> okay, so you were sometimes darkness, but now you are light. See, you are light in the Lord. That light, let there be light. You're walking in light. You're walking in the truth. You're walking in the word. You are the light of the world. You are walking in light. Walk not as children of the darkness. You're not walking as children of the darkness, but walk as children of the light. Yes. And we'll stop here because the rest of it is going to be really, really good. It's, it's, it's a good chapter. This teaches you Christian living. Stay from all appearance of evil. Come from among them and touch not the unclean thing. Be ye separate, said the Lord. That's what he's telling us. You got to live right. Take off the old man, put on the new man. And you got to go to church and get around Christians. You can't run with sinners and be a saint. Christianity is caught. You got to come and get taught the ways of the Lord and get around Christians who are bearing much fruit and stay connected to Jesus Christ. 
you got to stay connected. Apostle preached that recently. You got to stay connected. So we want to see you Sunday at church at 11 o'clock service. We have 11 o'clock service, 930 Bible Institute. We want you to come out to get into the word. And uh, we have different announcements coming up. We got a faith institute coming up, a faith university coming up. I think Apostle has that on Facebook. You can look at the announcements. And good things are happening here at Center of Attraction, the place where Jesus is Center of Attraction. If you want to contact us, you can at 989-777-1660. You can leave your request. If you have questions, let us know. But God loves you, and we love you. And we pray most of all that you receive Jesus as your Savior today, right now. Ask them to come into your heart. A, B, A, B, C, accept, believe, and confess. God bless you. Mighty God, mighty God, yes, you are mighty God.